Hi, this is Azad Ahmed, and today we're going to be talking about the Canadian Securities course, which is a requirement if you want to become a financial advisor, investment advisor in Canada. The Canadian Securities course is a very um, interesting and important type of course if you're working in the financial industry. And I'm going to start now with chapter number six, which is about the bonds. And uh, that is where we will start because that chapter is one of the most important ones, the bonds. And then we'll talk about the equities also, which are two different types of investment products. Uh, so the about the first topic that we're going to talk about is the concept of what is a bond, right? So fixed income securities, features and types of bonds. So the basic concept of a fixed income product is that the regular bond, the way it works is that an investor, they have $10,000 to invest. And what they do is they go to a bank or to a financial institution and they say, okay, here, take my money and you can use this money in your business. So the bank, either it can go to a bank or they can go to a company corporate, or they can go to the government. Government issues bonds, corporations issues bond, and also banks issues bonds. So these bonds are basically, they are taking the money from an investor. And there's a certain time period for the bond. For example, let's suppose it's a five-year bond. So the maturity of the bond is five years. The investor that put in the money in the bond, they have to keep it in for five years till the maturity. And there will be a document, it's called a bond trust deed, which indicates how long the bond is for, what are the coupon payments, the coupon payments, I'll come to that shortly, that's the annual interest, if there's any item which is pledged. So is there any guarantee? Usually bonds come with a guarantee that if the company goes bankrupt or if the bank is not able to pay you back the money, what is the guarantee, what is a pledge? or if the company can cancel the bond before maturity, let's suppose after three years, can the company cancel the bond and give you back your money or not? And other information, all this is in the bond trust deed. It's a document that you need to read and you will get all the information in it. So what happens, you put your money in for five years. Now for five years, you're not gonna give your money for free. You want something in return. So the bank or the corporation or the government promises you, okay, five years will pay you an annual interest uh, rate to you. <clears throat> so the annual coupon rate, what they do is they say, okay, let's calculate, let's suppose it's 3.5%. If you calculate on your calculator, what is 3.5% of $10,000, uh, that will equal $350. And every year the client will get $350. So they have year one, we have $350 coming in, then year two, then year three, and then year four, and then year five. So over the five years, these payments are coming to the investor. So they have basically loaned their money to the bank or to the corporation or to the government. And that is how they are getting the benefit of why they would give their money to a company or to the government in a bond. <clears throat> so everything is um, proceeding that way. Now, after five years, what happens is the client gets back their original investment. They had put in $10,000. So on maturity, after five years, the par value or the face amount or the principal these three words mean the same thing. If you see in your exam, the par value, the face amount, the principal, that means the original amount of money that the client put in, that is the amount they will get back. They put in 10,000, they will get back 10,000. So par value means 100% of the value and equal amount is returned. So that is the purpose of the par value. And this way the client is able to get back their full amount and they've got their $350 for five years also. 
So this in essence is how the bond, regular bond works. Um, so before we go on, you should, before we go on to the detail, you should understand how to do percentages also. Hopefully if you're working in the financial industry of a financial background, you have an idea or, but if this has not been your career, it's important for you to keep in mind, I just calculated 3.5% of $10,000 and um, you can do it in your head also, but you can do it on the calculator or you can keep in mind these basic concepts also when you're doing percentage calculations. A half a percent, think of it if you have a pizza and you cut it in half, you're doing one, in, one by two. You're cutting it into two parts in the middle and you're taking one part. So one out of two. On your calculator, if you do one and divide it by two, you will get 0 0.50. And 0 0.50 is equal to half a percent. And if you multiply the decimal by 100, you'll get a percentage. So if you multiply 0 0.5 by 100, you get 50%. So on your calculator, if you have, suppose, $300 and you multiply it by 50%, then you will get your answer, right? Um, and same way here, one fourth is meaning one out of four. If you cut a piece into four pieces and you take one piece, that's a quarter, that's 25%. So 25% means that you're taking 0.25 or 25% of the total. If it's $100, then $100 times 0.25 will give you $25. So that means you have $25 is a quarter of $100. Same way, one hour of fifth is 0 0.20 on your calculator, that's 20%. One out of tenth is 0.1 or 10%. One out of 20 is 0 0.05 or 5% on your calculator. So you need to understand those basic ones. And then if you have like 3.5%, like I said, that means you should know 3.5% means 3.5 divided by 100 is 0 0.035, right? And if you multiply that by 10,000, you'll get your answer, which was $350. Or you can do it on your calculator, 10,000 times 3.5, and then multiply by the percentage. You have to press the percentage sign. So. You should practice some of these calculations. Uh, you may want to pause the video and calculate those. Uh, what is 50% of 5,000? Uh, what is 10% of 7,500? So try those out and then you're good to go. So in this chapter about bonds, you need to understand that how the overall bonds work. Why do companies issue bonds? Corporations and governments, they issue bonds because there's different reasons. Number one, is to finance the future growth. The company wants to, for example, buy a company, another company, they need $5 million. They don't have the money right now, so they can issue a bond and they will use the money from the bond to buy the other company. So they will issue it in the market and people will invest, people and other investors and companies will invest their money into the bond. And so, the company can then, the corporation can then use that money in their business for five years, eight years, 10 years. Other thing is they can take advantage of leveraging. Leveraging is they're borrowing the money with the bond and they can use it to increase their production, to buy more equipment, to do more marketing. So overall they can use it in their business. And so there's many different types of bonds now. I just mentioned to you one, what is a regular bond? but there's many different types of bonds and many different features of bonds to understand. And the most common, of course, in the fixed income securities, again, there's different types of fixed income securities also. The main thing with the fixed income security is there's a regular income stream. You will get a regular payment, just like that example we saw, you're getting $350 every year if you invest in that regular bond. And I already mentioned to you, the trust deed is the document or the contract that has the details of the bond in the written form. There are, this regular definition of a bond is a security and it has a security like a building or equipment. The company will pledge certain type of business asset. Suppose 
equipment or a building and they will say if we default if we go bankrupt we will sell this asset and we will pay you back your money so that's what they promise hopefully the value is correct and everything is correct but this will be sold if they default or so either the company may be unable to pay your $350 a month it's not just you it'll be maybe 10,000 other bond investors maybe it's 3.5 million dollars a month a year sorry and so they need that money either they won't have that money or at the end if they don't have the money to return back your money and the other investors money after five years instead of paying you back your 10,000 they say sorry we don't have the money so then they would have to sell that asset so a bond has security there's another type of fixed income security called a debenture in the debenture uh, there is no such security like a building it's like government or companies which are very well established in the um, overall they will not issue the um, any they will not issue a bond with any security okay so that is the purpose of the debenture so we will stop here and then we will continue in our next lecture in more detail about this